One of the reasons to use mulch in the garden is to hold moisture in the soil. So you have to water less often. But have you ever wondered how big an effect that is? I mean, let's say you water every second day and you put mulch down. Does that mean you have to water every third day, every fourth day? Maybe you don't have to water at all, all week long. In this video, I'm gonna run a little experiment to see how well mulch keeps moisture in the soil. And I'm actually going to measure that moisture level. I've decided to use the soil in front of me here. It's the early part of July, and this part of the garden has been bare like this for at least a month. I have peas growing behind me here, and I've mulched the area I'm sitting on, but I haven't mulched this. So it's been dry most of June. In fact, we've had virtually no rain in June. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, and I thought it would moisten this, but I can see from looking at the top of the soil, it's already dried out. So we know going into this experiment that this is pretty dry soil here. I'm going to water it and then I'll measure it to see what kind of moisture level I have. And I'm gonna measure it in several spots so that we get a good average for the area. Then I'm gonna take half of this area and leave it bare. And I'm going to put straw mulch on the other half, just like I would in a normal garden. Then I'm going to leave it and come back periodically to measure the moisture level. Now, of course, I have to contend with the weather, so we'll see how that affects things. If we have a couple rainy days, then the experiment will just take longer. But I'll record the weather on a daily basis so you know what kind of rain we're getting. And then I'll measure the moisture periodically. And then I'll show you what the results look like. To measure moisture, I'm going to use the Rapid Test Mini Moisture Meter. This is both a pH and moisture, but we're only going to use the moisture side for this. You simply turn it on, and I have a dial here that goes from dry to wet, and it uses letters. So A is very dry, B, C, and then D, and D is wet. I have no idea what those letters represent as far as percent moisture goes. That's one of the big downsides of these meters. They're really not great for measuring the amount of moisture in soil. And I've done a separate video on that. If you're thinking of using one of these meters to tell you when to water, have a look at that video. It'll save you some time and money and probably save some plants. But for this test, this meter is good enough because I just want a relative amount. Is it dry, very wet or wet? halfway in between, that's good enough because we're gonna compare the regular soil to the mulch soil. That regular soil is our control. And when you do an experiment like this, it's critical you use a control. So for that, this meter is okay. So I wanna go through and measure the soil when it's dry, just to make sure it's really dry. It's also important that we go to the same depth each time. So I've put a little mark on my meter here. And when I put this in the soil, I'm gonna to go to the same depth every time. That's also important because the surface of the soil can be very dry and then a couple inches down could still be quite moist. So every time we put this in, it's important to go to the same depth. The other thing you can do to improve the accuracy of this is to take several spots in the area and measure them all and make sure they're the same. In each case, the needle went right between the A and the B segments. So this was an AB, that was AB, and the middle was A. So it's maybe a little drier in the middle. So the soil here is good and wet now. When I measure it with the meter, the needle goes right off to the end of the chart or even past the chart. So that's very wet. I'm gonna split this into two, right down the middle here. The reason I'm doing it this way is that since water is seeping this way, we're on a bit of a slope, this area I suspect will stay wetter than the top area. 
So it's important for the experiment to run the trial this way. If I did it this way and this side ended up being drier than this side, it wouldn't tell me much because I expect that to happen naturally because of the slope. So I'm simply going to cover it with some straw about that thick and it will settle down to about this. And then I'll come back periodically and take measurements. It's been five days since I started this experiment and uh, it's time to take some readings. Now in those five days, we've had fairly warm days and zero rain. And before I take the readings, let me bring you in close and show you what this looks like underneath the straw and over here where there's been no straw. You can visually see that the soil under the straw is much darker, indicating that it has moisture in it. The strip without the straw is very dry looking. All right, now let's take some readings. I've got the moisture meter turned on. I have my depth gauge, see what it says. That's a reading C. Still has some moisture in the ground, but it's getting much drier. I also know that as I stick this in, it's much harder to get to that depth. That's also a C. That's a D. That's a C. Now, as I get close to the straw, if I'm a couple inches away, you do see more moisture here than you do here. Now let's measure moisture under the straw. That's a D. It's almost to the end of the chart. This is off the chart, so it's very wet. This is not quite as wet as when I first watered it. When I did that, it was right off the scale. So the readings I'm getting now is either on the D, which is wet, or right at the edge of D, which is very wet. The way I test soil moisture in the garden is not with this thing, but with my finger. What does it feel like? And you can feel the moisture in this soil, showing that it's nice and wet. So we'll cover it up and we'll leave it for a little longer. Now, if I was growing plants in these two gardens, the one under the straw wouldn't have been watered yet. The one without the straw probably been watered a couple times. I find that the bare soil needs to be watered every two or three days, particularly if they're seedling. Larger plants have deeper roots and they don't have to be watered quite so often. But even with large tomatoes in this soil, I probably would have watered twice. Over here, I'm growing some of my own tomatoes and you can see that it's heavily mulched with straw. I haven't watered the tomatoes in at least four weeks, even though we've got no rain. The straw keeps the soil moist enough that it doesn't need regular watering. Yeah. In this dry section, all of the measurements were either a B or right on the line between B and C. Now let's do the same thing in the area that's been covered with mulch. All the measurements in this area were either at the start of the D or in the middle of the D. I'm sure you can see that the soil here is a nice dark color, which indicates it has moisture in it. If I take some of this and squeeze it together, it stays in the form that I squeeze it. I do have clay in this soil. When the clay and moisture mix together, this is what you get when you compact it. Now, if we do the same thing on the dry side, the color of this is a very grayish color. It's very loose on top. And you can see when I squeeze it, it doesn't form clods at all. It doesn't compact because there's no moisture in this. 
This is completely dry. Remember, neither spot has been watered for two weeks and there's been no rain for two weeks. This is a huge difference. If I was gardening in this, I wouldn't have had to water for those two weeks. There's still lots of moisture in this soil to grow plants. In case you're one of those people that don't really trust moisture meters, or even your eyes, I mean, in this experiment, you could actually see the difference between the dry soil and the wet soil. But let's see what the real results are. So here are some tomatoes that I planted early in the year. We've had no rain for about five weeks now. And this particular row of tomatoes hasn't been watered during that whole time. Now I do water over here for my peas and I did water over there for those tomatoes. So some of the water might have run down here. And of course I have a pot here, I water that too. But imagine this, no rain for five weeks, no watering, now let's see what the tomatoes look like. Well, they're doing pretty good and I've already harvested some. The plants don't seem to be suffering at all. Now this year the plants are a little smaller because we had a really cold spring, but they're catching up now. What about the soil under this mulch? What kind of moisture does it have? Well, just by looking at it, you can see it's quite dark. It's clumping nice. And that indicates that it has a fair amount of moisture in there. Well, let's go scientific. What does the meter say? The middle of C. So that's in a range that tells me this doesn't need to be watered yet. The tomatoes are growing well. They're not showing any wilting. They're not starved for water. The mulch is keeping the soil moist, even though it hasn't been watered for five weeks. To be honest, I would normally water this every couple of weeks, just to make sure there's a bit of excess moisture in the garden. But I didn't water it just to make this video. I hope I've convinced you of the value of mulch. Mulch makes a tremendous difference in the water requirement. With a good layer of mulch, you'll be watering very infrequently. If you don't put mulch down, you're gonna to have to water this every few days, especially in a vegetable garden. Now in an ornamental bed, I wouldn't water quite so often, but in a vegetable bed, our goal is to grow these plants quickly so that we get a good harvest before frost. You have to keep the vegetables watered and a straw mulch is your best choice. I hope I've just saved you a lot of time watering your garden.